All right, boys and girls, welcome back to the drive through Special shout out to Mr. Cole. Soon we will be uh, acting like we're guarding each other on the court again, buddy. Don't you worry about it. All right, this is 3-3, three, three, and we're really going to focus on functions here. What do you guys know about functions? Well, this is the moment when we try to get the pen to work on the ViewSonic. All right. This is what you're used to so far for a function. This particular function is a linear function. Hopefully you recognize it to have a slope of 3 and a y-intercept of 1. But really, this is just a, this day is about uh, the language and the notation. You, hopefully you know that you say this f of X. Well, what does that mean? That means this particular machine is a function of X. Well, what does that mean? That means that it depends on the value of X. So here's what I want you to do if you're not exactly sure what the heck a function is. I just want you to think about it as like a number machine. Okay? And you put whatever you want into this machine. Now, sometimes you're not able to put whatever you want into it. Sometimes you can't put decimals. Sometimes you can't put negative numbers. Sometimes um, you can't put a number over 100. That is called the domain of the function. Okay? But you put in a number in general. So let's say we put in a 10. And then it pops out. What it pops out is f of 10, the function evaluated at 10. And so what's 3 times 10? 30 plus 1 is 31. And so we would say f of 10 is 31. Or if you evaluate the function at 10, the output will be 31. So all that it needs to do to be a function is that um, every time you put in a number, it has to give you the, uh, the same or a, real, a reliable output for that number. It can't change. It has to be um, a definitive output. Okay? And that still probably doesn't make any sense to you, and that's totally fine. I want you to know I didn't really understand functions until I started teaching. Um, but there is a very simple way to tell whether or not something is a function. And that is called the vertical line test. Okay? So if you can look at a graph, and everywhere I draw a vertical line on the graph, I only hit one point, then that is a function. Okay? And that means because it passes the vertical line test. Why does that work? Well, it means that for every unique point that I put in for x, I only get one point out for y. Okay? So what the heck? You still probably don't understand what that means, but let me just tell you this function, this is not a function. This graph is not a function. It fails the vertical line test. Well, what does that mean? Well, if I draw a vertical line at x equals 5, here, if you realize, um, that is my value when x is 5. Well, at some point on this machine, I put in a 5, and I got like a 2.1 for my output. But at some other point in this machine, I put in a 5, and it gave me a negative 2.1 for the output. So basically, what that means is that this machine is broke. It is not reliable. It doesn't give the same output for every unique input, and therefore, it's not a function at all. Okay? So now we can go pretty quick. Number three. Well, here, I'm sorry. We always got to read the directions. I'm bad at that at life, and I'm bad at that when I teach. So determine if it's a function. So this one was a yes, and this is a no. If so, state the key features of the function. So let me erase all my lines so it doesn't make it so convoluted to read this. All right, so the maximum is at 1, 4. It looks like the minimum is at 4, 0. 
Okay, this is your x-intercept. It's also your x-intercept. Notice how do we find the x-intercept? We put in 0 for y. And it looks like your y-intercept is right here at about 0, 3.2. I'm just making that 3.2 up. And how do we find our y-intercept? Again, we put in a 0 for our x. So, as we stated, number 3 is indeed a function. There is no place where I can draw a vertical line and hit this thing twice. It looks like our minimum is right here. Uh, what is that? Negative 5, 6, negative 8, negative 3. Okay, that's our minimum. And it looks like our maximum is over here at 10, 5. Okay, um, it looks like we have a y-intercept. How do we find our y-intercept? We put in a 0 for x. So that's 0, 4.1 is our y-intercept. And it looks like negative... Let's see, negative 6.1 comma 0 is our x-intercept. How do we have find our x-intercept? We put in a 0 for y. Okay, for the rest of this, um, I'm just going to name the points. I'm not going to write them out because I, I, I honestly do think that you guys understand this. Okay? Number 4 would be an example of a discrete function. Notice it is not continuous, but it is a function. Why is it a function? Because it passes the vertical line test. For every unique input point that I put in, I get a unique output point. It never, the machine never breaks. Um, we don't know what the y-intercept for either of these are, the y or the x-intercept. We could say that this point here would be the max and this point here would be the min. This appears to me to be an exponential graph, but I don't know that for sure. Okay, now this is not a function, number five. I want you to pause the video, or not pause it, take a good look at this, at your paper or at the video, and decide why this is not a function. Well, it's because it fails the vertical line test here and here. What does that mean? Well, at some point, I put a negative nine in for x, and it gave me a 2. But later on in the day, I put a negative 9 in for x, and it gave me a 4. That means my machine is broken, and therefore it is not a function. Okay? Number 6, this is a function. It looks like a linear function. In fact, b here is negative 1. What's my m? It looks like I go over 1, up 3, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 3. So our m is 3. So in case you were curious, f of x, our function is a function of x for this. And what's the equation? It's 3x minus 1. Okay. 7 is called a discontinuous function. What does this mean? That means that this line begins to the right of that point. What does this mean? That means this curve, I should have called the first one a curve, well, it continues on to this point, but these two points are not both there. That's the, that's the significance of this open dot. So I can draw a line at this point, x equals 6, and I only hit the, this point. I don't hit this point. So that means it is a function. Y-intercept would be 10. Come on now. Come on now. X-intercept would be about 14.9. Okay, it's got a maximum at 0, 10, and a minimum at, I don't know, 15, 16, 7, 18.3, negative 4. I don't know. That's, forget it. All right, now, the table on the right represents a continuous function. So it's some points from a continuous function. Determine the domain, rain, x-intercept, and y-intercept. Well, the domain...
the domain x well there's two ways to write the domain okay let's see you can write it like this x goes from 0 to 6 with a hard bracket or you can say x is less is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 6 both of those are fine okay the range the range well y it looks like can be as small as negative 3 and as big as 20 okay or you could say y is bigger than or equal to negative 3 and less than or equal to 20 both of those in my class I will accept just so you know there are some classes that only accept it this way and there are some classes that only accept it this way and what we're trying to learn in our school here is how to be the, have the most diverse language mathematical language that we can have well what's the x-intercept how do I find the x-intercept without graphing it I put a 0 in for y well in this case y and f of x are the same thing so the x-intercept is 2 comma 0 and the y-intercept well we got to put a 0 in for x so that would be 0 comma 2 and I feel super good about uh, all the stuff you guys are learning in our class what's the minimum value 1 comma negative 3 so it's our minimum output value our minimum y alright number 9 let's see this is a discrete function okay so the domain you cannot list it in brackets you actually have to write this out so the domain is 1 2 well x equals 1 2 3 4 and 5 and the range y equals well I'm just going to keep them in order. I don't really care. 4, 10, 5, 8, and 3. Uh, this is not a huge deal, but a discrete function, um, remember it has steps. Like it doesn't, that doesn't mean it keeps going. So you can only put a, in a whole number in this problem, okay? Which is why we have to list them all. We only have five things we can put in. Where in this function here, it's a continuous function, which means these are just some of the points on the function. How many points are on a line? Infinite. So we have to write it out in a in a in an inequality like this or like this. Okay. All right. What's the? Uh, we can't identify the x and the y intercepts, so we cannot do that. What's the minimum value? It looks to me like it's 5, 3. All right. So to describe the features, the amount of daylight in hours is dependent on the month of the year. OK. Describe the features. Well, there will be a maximum and a minimum amount of sun during the year. Um, Let's look at 11. The first term in a sequence is 36. Each consecutive term is half of the previous term. Well, this seems like a geometric function um, or an exponential function. You could call it both of those things. It is continuous. Um, I don't think it's going to have a, a minimum. I think this is going to continue on forever and keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller but it will never get to zero I want you to think about that it will never get to zero number 12 Marcus bought a $900 couch on a six month interest free plan he makes $50 payments on the loan each week I think this is a discrete linear function 
meaning I think in number 12 you would only see points. This is how much money he owed on the, on the uh, couch this week and next week and the following week and the following week and the following week and you would see a linear discrete function whose maximum is 900 that will also be the y-intercept and his minimum would be I think 18 comma 0. After 18 weeks the uh, amount owed will be zero. Um, I feel really good about 13 because we just did it in number 11. Right? Is there any difference? We lost the word exactly. Okay, forget it. 14, an empty 15 gallon tank is being filled with gasoline at a rate of two gallons per minute. Now 14 would be a continuous linear function. Its y-intercept would be zero, so it starts at zero, and its max would be uh, something comma 15, probably seven and a half comma 15. This video is getting a little too long and I got to teach you guys, so I think you're going to be all over the graphing, but if you're not, I want you to at this very moment to come to me and ask me how to do this in your graphing calculator. If you are not using a graphing calculator, you are costing yourself time and you're, you're just going to keep costing yourself time as you move into Algebra 2 because it becomes a very useful tool. All right. Have a great day. Boom!